It's well, hard to do because it's blurry as mm -hmm. hell. Oh, Some people refer to this as a peace It's invented by Colonel Samuel Colt. And they used to say that God created man. But Sam Colt made them all equal. This is a fine weapon even by today's standards. It's very well balanced. It can be drawn and fired accurately in less than a second. And there were very few men, if any, here in Tombstone that could match the gun skills of one buckskin Frank Leslie. And most of you folks probably never even heard of buckskin Frank Leslie, and that's a real shame because he was indeed one of the toughest men to ever walk these streets. Frank, he was an army scout and a gambler and a prospector and even a bartender from time to time. He was a real ladies' man, too. This next event you're going to see occurred on 14 November, 1882. Frank is tending bar up here at the Oriental. And his customer is Billy Claiborne. Billy Claiborne, along with Ike Clanton, were the two cowards that ran from the gunfight at the OK Corral. I can die of thirst in a stinking saloon. Yeah, I'm about ready. I'm parched. I'll oh, come on now, boys. Well, it's about time, Frank. We've been working all morning. Well, boys, it was such a uh, fine morning, I decided to saddle up and ride my horse on down to the river. Got to put it down there. San Pedro. Hey! Give me a bottle of whiskey. I'm dry. Billy, I can see you're dry. But you ain't getting no whiskey here. Get on out of here. Yeah, get yourself a bath on me. While I was down there, boys, I uh, ran into a couple friends of yours. Could that be? Old gold dollar Marjorie. <laughs> Not both of them. Oh, both of them told me all about last night. Now, the way I heard it, she's sitting on your lap and people are singing. Wait. I said give me a bottle of whiskey. I told you, Billy, you done had enough whiskey. Now go on and get on out of here. Ignorant red. Don't just stand there, boy. I said get. Why don't you get home and sober up? Ugh, I just don't know about that kid, boys. About uh, two-thirds of his life inside a box. Another foot in the grave. He ain't never gonna change, bro. Well, it was getting a little late, so I headed on back up here to the Oriental. See what you boys think. <laughs> I don't think we should have a party. Right. Uh, Billy, if you don't give me another bottle of whiskey, I'm gonna tell him. And everybody in this town, what you done to my friend Johnny? That's it, Billy. Oh, oh, oh. Watch the Frank you got a gun. Get on me, kid. Now, I done told you. Get on home and sober up. Nobody throws Billy Claiborne out of a saloon like that. Oh, really? Well, I just did, Billy. I was at the OK Corral. Oh, you were at the OK Corral, all right. Up until the bullets started flying, and you ran away like the little coward that you are. I ain't running no more. I got me another gun. I'll be on this street for you today. Go home and get some sleep. The boys got in for a wooden overcoat. Maybe he's got a desk for you, Bill. You can't find him.
Bowring is calling me out. He sure is. Uh, some kids just don't learn, do they? Give a little yourself. word to the front line there, Frank. <clears throat> Watch your back. I always do. Billy Claiborne! Yes, sir! Don't do it, kid! Well, Frank, well, boys, I could have done more, but I couldn't have done any less. Now, folks, you heard Bailey referring to a Johnny, speaking of Johnny Ringo. Now, despite what the movies tell us, it probably was not Doc Holliday that killed Johnny Ringo. Doc was in a hotel room in Colorado dying at this point. The popular belief back then and still today was that it was indeed Buckskin Frank Leslie that killed Ringo right up here at Turkey Creek. Now, despite that belief, local law enforcement could never acquire enough proof to build a case against Frank for the Ringo killing. But he killed 13 men while he was here in Tombstone alone. And it was his 14th victim, a woman, that led him to Yuma Prison for 25 years. Well, believe it or not, old Frank turned out to be a model prisoner, so they paroled him after only seven. And at that point, he did what a lot of men did back then. He went north to Alaska in search of gold. 1921 rolls around, they find Frank's body in California wearing his signature buckskin clothing. But the circumstances around his death, well, that was never known. 